Welcome back everybody, Patrick here. Moving on to another question. This is going to be a proof with vectors and this one is pretty tricky. There's gonna be a lot of steps in this one. So if two times vector x minus vector y is equal to vector m, and then three times vector y minus two times vector z is equal to vector n, and three times vector x is 21 over a times vector y minus three over four times vector z, we have to prove that vector m is equal to one fourth of vector n, right? So there is a lot going on here. So let's write out the statement that we wanna prove here. So we wanna prove vector m is equal to one fourth of vector n. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna work with both of these. By the way, there's multiple ways to solve this question. There's different sort of algebraic sequences that you can do to prove this. The way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna work with the right side of the equation here, and then I'm gonna work with the left side of this equation here. And if I can make both of these sides equal, so if I could have equal expressions on both sides, then we've pretty much proved that this uh, equation is gonna hold. So starting off with this right side, one over four times vector n. Well, notice with this information, we're actually given an expression for vector n. So we know that vector n is, uh, let's actually write it over here. So vector n is equal to three times vector y minus two times vector z. So what we can do is we can just multiply vector n by one over four. That means we gotta multiply that whole right side by one over four as well. All right, so I just took that expression that we were given, multiplied both sides by one over four. So one over four times vector n is basically equal to three over four times vector y minus two over four, which is minus one over two times vector z. So I just took that one over four, distributed in the bracket. So we have an expression for one over four times vector n in terms of y and z, in terms of vectors y and z. So now let's try to find an expression for m in terms of y and z as well. So notice we're actually given an expression for m. So vector m is equal to two x, two times vector x minus vector y. But notice that this expression for vector m is in terms of x and y, while this expression for one over four times vector n is in terms of y and z. So what we wanna do is we either wanna switch up this to be in terms of x and y, or we wanna switch up this to be in terms of y and z. And I say we just work with this side because there's just a lot of fractions over there. I feel like it'll be easier to switch this in terms of y and z. Now, how can we do that? Well, what we can do is we can use this expression that we're given here. So, if I write this out, three times vector x equals 21 over eight times vector y minus three over four times vector z. Notice what we can do is we can isolate for this vector x here, and then we can plug in that expression for vector x here, because it'll be in terms of y and z, and then notice that whole expression will be in terms of y and z. So let me show you what I mean by that. So to isolate for this vector x, what we can do is we could divide everything by three. So vector x would equal 21 over eight divided by three. That's like 21 over eight times one over three, which is 21 over 24 times vector y minus three over four divided by three over one, that's like three over four times one over three, so that would be like uh, minus three over 12 times vector z. Another way, if uh, you don't wanna divide fractions and stuff, 
we're basically, to get rid of this 3, we would multiply it by the reciprocal, 1 over 3. So we multiply this by 1 over 3, multiply this by 1 over 3. So 21 over 8 times 1 over 3. We just multiply the numerators. 1 times 21 is 21. 8 times 3, 24. Same thing here. 1 times 3, 3. 3 times 4, 12. Either way, you end up getting this for x. And then notice that we can actually uh, reduce these fractions. So 21 over 24, 3 goes into both the numerator and denominator. So that reduces to 7 over 8 times the vector y. Minus 3 over 12, that's like 1 over 4 times vector z. So now we got vector x isolated. We can take this expression, sub it in for vector x. So we got vector m equals 2 times 7 over 8 times vector y. I want to erase this over here. Uh, 7 over 8 times vector y minus 1 over 4 times vector z minus vector y. So for this x, I just plugged in this bracket here. And now notice how we have vector m all in terms of y and z. We just have to simplify at this point. So vector m would be, uh, what, 14 over 8 times vector y, right? So it's like 2 over 1, and we're distributing in the bracket, minus 2 times 1 over 4 is 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2, vector z, minus vector y. Now, 14 over 8, that actually reduces to um, 7 over 4 times vector y. And notice that uh, this and this are like terms. So this is like minus 1 um, times vector y. So we basically you got 7 over 4 minus 1, which is like 4 over 4, which would give us 3 over 4. So 7 over 4 times vector y minus 1 times vector y, that reduces to 3 over 4 times vector y, and then there is no other terms with the vector z, so we just keep that minus 1 half there. And notice that m is equal to 3 over 4 times vector y minus 1 half times vector z, and that is the exact same expression that we got for 1 over 4 times vector n. So because these two expressions are equal, vector m is equal to 1 over 4 times vector n, and we proved it.